Hi, it is Dr. Ro Gwyn, and in our video today, I'm going to go over optimal joint health. I've decided to make this video because I get a lot of questions on what can I do to improve my joint health, have healthier joints, and usually the questions are about supplements. What supplements can I take? And I want to make it very clear that supplements can be a supplement. They can be beneficial, but the the benefits of supplements are extremely small compared to some more active types of uh, measures that you can take to maintain optimal healthy joints. So the first two I'm going to go over are, they're not secrets at all, everybody knows them, but they have to be mentioned and that is of course exercise and diet. Uh, the concept is this, we need to either use it or lose it. Our joints are made to move our bodies around and if we don't use those joints, they're going to get stiff, tight, restricted, develop arthritis. You're just not going to be able to move them anymore. So you want to do some forms of exercise. What form of exercise is best? It depends on your personal uh, fitness level right now. So it could just be, I just need to work on a little bit of balance, coordination. It could be things like yoga or tai chi. Uh, body weight exercises could be really good. These are body weight squats and lunges and maybe push-ups or push-ups from the knees if you can't do those. Uh, this is where yoga could be very beneficial, very helpful. However, I would highly recommend that you understand your flexibility level. If you're already too limber, which some people are, they have a tendency to overstretch. I've made videos before where I talk about really flexible people want to stretch too much. They overstretch the joint capsules and that's no good, but they don't have good stability. Whereas sometimes people that are really stiff, strong, they're also, they're, they're tight, but they're strong. And so they want to do more exercises and lifting weights and throwing weights around, but they're not limber enough. So you need to find that balance and that's going to be, you're going to have to figure that out or find somebody that you can work with a knowledgeable personal trainer, athletic trainer, um, yoga instructor, physical therapist, a good chiropractor, somebody that can help you navigate your body and your body's movements. Um, the next one, of course, is diet. And diet is so much more important than uh, supplements because it's not so much about what are we going to put into our body that's going to miraculously help us have healthier joints. It's the things that you're not going to put into your body that are damaging to the joints. Now it used to be thought that it was all of the excess weight that was harmful for the joints. And a new concept has come out. Uh, they talk about metaflammation or this systemic inflammation in our, in our bodies that start to damage the joints. Um, when I say inflammation, when you think of arthritis as bursitis, tendonitis, these things that are so common, these musculoskeletal conditions that are so common, they all end with itis, and itis is the inflammation. Well, this concept of metaflammation means our body is just in this chronic, naturally inflammatory state. And that occurs a lot of times in people that eat too many refined foods, sugars, um, overly refined and processed starches and things like that. So again, it's not so much of, oh, I'm going to take this certain supplement that's going to fix me and make me better. It's no, I'm going to avoid the sugary foods, the pastries, and all of these things that are going to be damaging for my joints long term. And I've got a great article out, What the Hell Can I Eat?, which is in, in the description below that you can check out and kind of get an idea of these um, uh, lifestyle choices that you can make for a better diet. On to the next two things that are less commonly talked about, more of the you know, secrets of a healthy joint. One concept that I never hear mentioned that is extremely important is this idea of joint centration or joint centering, keeping the joints centered, meaning in their most optimal range where there's the most joint surface contact within those joints. So we kind of use an analogy of just a typical hip or shoulder joint. Um, we want it centered properly and if the muscles on each side of the joint aren't balanced, meaning one is too strong or too overactive and the other one is too weak or not strong enough to center it and pull it back, what you run into is a situation where the joint's going to be pulled in one direction here and it's going to be moving on the outside surface of the joint rather than being centered in that area where it's supposed to be. So, for example, this can happen if and this is a common example. If people are too tight in the front of the shoulder, well, the shoulder might roll forward like this here. If they're not strong enough in the back of the shoulder, in between the shoulder blades, that kind of pull it back here. Well, now you run into a situation where that shoulder is just forward all of the time. 
So you might need some stretching, some massaging, some, uh, some certain techniques to get this back. But then of course you want to strengthen the backside. Something similar can happen if you're too tight here and not strong enough in what are called the lower traps. So dominant in the upper trap, not strong enough in the lower trap. Now the shoulder's here. So when you move and reach for things, you're up in here. It puts the shoulder at a mechanical disadvantage. People will end up with these rotator cuff tears and tendonitis and impingement syndromes and things like that. One more final example, and these things can happen throughout the entire body. You know, we'll just kind of talk about the neck. Sometimes people are too tight right here in the back of the neck, but the deep neck flexors, which is kind of the neck's core muscles, aren't strong enough. So people end up with a posture like this, where the head comes out. So some stretching, some massaging needs to be done in the back of the neck here, and some strengthening to bring that back. And now you have joint alignment, you have joint centration, these center joints. And if you have center joints, you're going to create less wear and tear within the joints and you're going to have well-balanced muscles, so you're going to get less muscle strains and things like that. And the last secret that I want to talk about that is hardly ever talked about is um, <clears throat> doing some stimulation effects on the nervous and the, and the little nerves around the joints and in the soft tissue. So this could be done through kind of massage techniques, myofascial release techniques, trigger point therapy, and then of course spinal manipulation done by uh, chiropractors most often. These things will stimulate the little nerve receptors near the joints and the soft tissues. They're called mechanoreceptors and proprioceptors and these things like that. And what they're responsible for is putting different input or information in through those tissues, which reaches the brain, which does two things. One, it helps to control pain because it's information that is something other than pain. So people can actually control pain through massage, through trigger point therapy, through spinal manipulation. But the other thing is, you know, to talk about these proprioceptors, this is our body's awareness. When we have more body awareness, we have more coordination. We stimulate these proprioceptors through these same things, through certain massage and spinal manipulation techniques. You have better body awareness, you have better, better body awareness, you have more balance and coordination through the tissues. So those are just some ideas. How do you get started? Who should you go see? Again, you want to find somebody who's knowledgeable on these multiple areas. Probably somebody who's knowledgeable um, with nutrition, with just overall health, uh, body alignment, and it could be a chiropractor, it could be a physical therapist, a personal trainer, or a yoga instructor, or something like that. But not all are going to be knowledgeable on all of these things, and definitely not all of them are going to have this uh, idea of whole body uh, alignment and joint centration. So you're going to want to do some homework and maybe get referrals of friends or family members and find somebody who you think would do a good job of helping you through these things. And I am always here, if you have any questions, please uh, ask us a question. All of our contact information is, uh, is on here so you can always give us a call. Um, I hope this helped out, give you some ideas of do's and don'ts for optimal joint health.